Okay. It's time to start the, the first tea session. Thank you very much for all of you for staying Friday afternoon. And I hope that in the second session we have almost as many people as in this one or even more. No. So uh, let's start by the IPF not well, just a reminder of the policies and that by contributing in IPF and in particular in this working group, you are agreeing to follow the IPF processes and that uh, if you contribute, you should uh, disclose any patent, etc. that you are aware of and that uh, you uh, need to work respectfully with others. So I don't expect much heated discussions today, but uh, if they happen, okay, just uh, work uh, respectfully. So just the discussions, keep them technical, no personal discussions here, and prepare to contribute to the working, to the working group. Just here, we are not too much here, we are friends. Uh, for the people here, just don't forget, the scan, make the photo, sign in with the, and always use Miteco. Now we are, at this point, we are all used to this one, but don't, don't forget it. And uh, turn off any, any audio uh, and video, so, so we don't have any kind of echo. And for the remote participants, if any, that uh, unless you present, you don't should try not to put your audio and video and use a second much better to be heard better. So here we have a, please help us with the note takings, especially if someone makes a comment, uh, make sure that it is captured, okay, so it's understood, so there are not uh, misunderstandings. Okay, so here, if you help us taking notes here, it will be much, much, much better. Okay, so here, just log in to take the notes, especially for the discussions. So we have two sessions today. Um, in the first uh, two hours, we will go through the working group documents that um, the first ones are in a much mature state. Okay, and they are um, uh, say going in the in the processes on, or about to go to the last call uh, processes. And then we start with the, the different slicing related drafts that uh, comply the second, the second half of this morning sessions. And then in the afternoon, we in the afternoon session, we continue with the uh, non-working group uh, documents also covering slicing and the panel we have also some uh, documents that are uh, coming from the, we have one coming from CCAM that I guess uh, we will, if the working group like it, we might be able to transfer it to, to here to, to this, okay? So that's for the, second, for the second half, not that in the second part we still have uh, we have plenty of room available in the second part, so we expect that in the afternoon we can end earlier today in the, in the afternoon session. So we will start with the documents that are not being presented. The, the, the piece of RFC uh, 3272 32 and uh, the, especially the document that I would, in that it, in the, the first one is in the editor queue and the second, the second one also has passed all the ISD processes and I think it, will, it is worth to highlight that uh, based on the ISG evaluation process, as it was already discussed on the list, there, were, there has been some uh, notable changes that you not have, so the title was changed and there was also a note with the clarification of the applicability of the term IPF network slices. Uh, also, we have now the PCCC use cases also submitted uh, to the ISG for the publication, so we expect that the process to start soon. So, no questions. We move to the to the next status. So here we have a set of uh, 
documents that are uh, still uh, that are still some some actions. Okay, so we have the one two. Uh, we will um, use the next slot uh, to discuss this further. Perfect. So we can go in the in detail. But G, you have some comment? Jinong from Huawei. Just to briefly mention that uh, uh, Kevin and I met uh, offline uh, this week, and we resolved most of the comments, and we will update the draft accordingly. There's one remaining issue for the working group to consider. Yeah. Yeah, we will um, discuss that. We'll dwell on that a little bit more in the next slot. Yeah. If you're in the room, please make sure to join on the app or on your computer because we're expecting to do a poll related to that discussion. Okay. Um, so we will go in more detail so on, on all of these drafts in the in the next one. So unless you have now some also some comment on the on any of the documents that are either in the working group lab call or that are going to be in the working group call, we will go detail one by one in the in the next slide, in the next slide deck. So here for the liaison, uh, we have uh, in this uh, framework for our network slices that it is this ongoing liaison that we uh, that we have that we just inform them um, um, about it. And I think as Scott, if you are around uh, to come to the mic for there is another uh, potential liaison on OTN, if I remember correctly. Yeah, there is, whoa, <laughs> Scott Mansfield Erickson. I'll stand back here. There is another liaison that's come from the ITUT and it's related to OTNT roadmap. It's one that's been responded to before. So if there's any information that anybody wants to send back, we're creating a response back to the ITU for the study group 15 meeting, which is coming up next in a couple weeks. So just it, all you got to do is provide a list of names of drafts that you think they'd be interested in. That's good. Thanks. Okay, so deadline two weeks, right? Is what we the consider. deadline is whenever you do it. Yeah, I mean, but, okay. but if you are meeting in two weeks, if yeah. uh, that, that would be- It reasonable. can be input, yeah. It's, it's the type of document that has no deadline as far as they're concerned. So if you get it to us before the meeting, any time before the meeting's fine. Thanks. Okay, so just please uh, working group, in the, I think it's, as Scott mentioned, if you have some documents that you consider that is worth and related to this OTN standard, OTN standardization, just please compile them. Okay. So we move to the, the GitHub documents. So as you remember, we have this, uh, this GitHub where some uh, people did the transfer. I, I recall the word some okay so if the work that you are that you and you would like to move it to the to this working group github contact us i think it's it's a good place to to do host the the, the all the all the githubs instead of having them in individual or let's say not not the itf this working group i mean it's not mandatory okay but i mean yes recommended that I mean, if you have it it's better to have it under the umbrella of, of this okay? so just contact us okay and remember that even if you track issues in the in the git uh, the process is as usual and we need to and we need to build the consensus on the list and also on the discussions that we do here okay so uh, it is not replacing anything okay so just uh, just be aware of that and uh, just use the mailing list in in addition to those on opening issues in in github and uh, please ask the the interims when you need it and also for the the working meetings as you know we have uh, periodically 
the ACT and POI meeting, and also there is the P discussion meeting that happened also on Friday. So uh, these are uh, available. Uh, so if for other purposes also you need you need more, just please ask us to provide the, the official exam one. And just the, the final reminder for the for the IPR and that uh, whenever we go to a to the working group last call process or to the adoption process, uh, we call for the for the IPR. So we need a statement for everybody. So so be careful, especially when you have multiple contributors that are not regular participants in ITF. That we typically is, that is delaying the process in many many documents. Uh, we have now, for example, we have an example now also with the young young form of computation one that there are some people even that the name addresses that not exist and it's complicated. So uh, if you collaborate and you have some uh, some contributors, even the small contributors, but they are not regular ITF participants, remind them that they need also to if they contribute to ITF they also have this commitment okay so it's not just i put a small thing and then i forget please ask your contributors for that so now i think we can go with the um, uh, detailed status of each document yeah, next on the agenda is the working group document status um, I see about 50 participants on Medeco. If uh, you guys haven't joined that, please do. Um, so there are 28 documents listed on this slide. Uh, we have made some progress in uh, pushing some of the modeling documents towards the finish line. Um, and we are hoping that we will be able to get those out of the working group by the next IDF. Uh, so as always, uh, quality reviews are, are most welcome uh, as we uh, work towards putting in publication requests for these. We have um, a couple of documents, uh, the RFC 3272 BIS and the ITF network slices draft that are in RFC 8 SQ. There's one document, the PCCC use cases document that for which we have put in a publication request. Um, we have eight working group documents on the agenda today. So that leaves us with 17 documents and uh, the status of each of those are listed in the slide deck. Of those 17, there are a couple for which um, uh, we have this post working group last call tag uh, uh, suffix to them. Uh, one of those is the GM plus controller interwork document. It did go through uh, an early routing directory review. Uh, a few comments came in, uh, a revision was published to address those. So the next step for that would be to get the Shepard write-up completed and uh, uh, publication request put in. Uh, the other document that's in the post-working group last call is the enhanced VPN document, and we'll dwell on that um, in, in an upcoming slide. Um, I will not be, uh, as usual, walking through the status of each of these documents. Uh, I will, however, double-click on a select few, uh, which we deem need some immediate attention and uh, dwell on those. For the rest, you can go through the slides, you can go through the status reports that were sent to the list. And um, if you have any questions or comments, please do uh, post them here or send those to the list. Uh, so let me jump to slide three. Uh, this is the Yang document um, that covers uh, performance metrics for um, virtual networks and TE tunnels in the ACTN context. Uh, there was a revision published for this uh, in September. And uh, with this revision, the authors are saying that there are no more changes to be made. And the document is ready to be considered for working with last call. So please do uh, review this in anticipation of an upcoming last call. Um, and this should uh, we should get going with this as soon as the VN Yang document is complete. Uh, can we go jump to slide six, please? Uh, this is the document that talks about applicability of ACTN to network slicing. Um, the authors did publish a revision for this in late August. And with this revision, uh, they are saying they are done, uh, really done. Uh, uh, so again, the plea here is uh, for uh, reviewing this in anticipation of an upcoming last call. Uh, let's go to slide seven. 
Okay. So this is the enhanced VPN document. Um, we did take the document through a working class call before the last IETF. Uh, there was a revision, a revision 14 that was published to address uh, comments that were received during the working class call from Joel uh, uh, regarding the isolation uh, specific text. Uh, we, the document then went through an early routing diatribe review. Uh, uh, thanks to Ketan, we did get um, uh, fairly detailed comments and a fairly thorough review of the document. Uh, revision 15 was published as uh, uh, to address some of those comments. And as she mentioned earlier, the authors did sync up with our routing diatribe reviewer this week. And uh, uh, it seems like they have made some progress. Uh, they were, uh, they were not, there was an updated set of review comments that Ketan sent to the list uh, this week. Um, so there still seem to be a few core issues that need to be resolved. Uh, one of the core issues is with regards to the use of uh, two terms for the same construct, that these two terms being VTN and NRP. And the ask was to use NRP for um, uh, all practical purposes and uh, remove uh, the use of VTN. Um, the chairs did uh, discuss this and we believe it's a valid ask. And before we pose this question to the uh, to the group, I would like to request Ketan and G to see if they have anything else to add to what I said. Uh, Ketan G, the floor, floor is yours if you had, want to add something. OK, so you guys seem to be in agreement. So uh, we will go ahead and pose the question. OK, don't be shy. Okay, uh, we have about half of the working group, uh, half of the people who voted have said that, uh, uh, actually tw we have 24 folks who have said yes, to go ahead and uh, make the change. Uh, no, no, yeah, it's unanimous of those who have participated. We, we, don't, we don't see any opposition. Um, and that, that's a good indicator, thanks for the feedback. Uh, of the remaining documents, Kevin. Uh, just uh, another suggestion, uh, not the NRP thing, but uh, would it be uh, more clear to call this uh, NRP base VPN or NRP VPN instead of enhanced VPN? Uh, it may be, it sounds like a more technical name to me. Uh, I just wanted to make that suggestion. So this was uh, another comment that you had, which was, uh, I think, yeah, the uh, the comment that you specifically had was not to use VPN plus, but yeah. use something else yeah. instead of that. Uh, that's... So I, I know that the working group has like gone through the discussion and enhance, but uh, this is just a suggestion. Uh, you know, further in the process, somebody would may ask like, what is enhanced and like what we get into like uh, those terms, right? Enhance and traditional. Uh, so just a suggestion to the working group. Anybody wants to uh, respond to that? Greg. Yeah, Greg, sorry, go ahead. Um, Greg Mariski Erickson. Um, yes, I appreciate the, uh, the discussion and the uh, question of um, tightening up the terminology. Um, thinking of it uh, some more as that, um, I think that uh, 
any uh, VPN solution will be NRP based. So um, what we're discussing now is enhanced. Uh, I think that probably would be just uh, possible to remove enhanced altogether. Because again, uh, it's, we're talking about that uh, the uh, technology that we have now is, as we uh, discuss it and realize, at least uh, for myself, is a special case of uh, more encompassing technology for VPN. And that would with NRP. So uh, maybe we need just to realize that and say, yes, so basically what we are doing, we're evolving VPN and that will be a VPN and our existing technology is just a special case of it. Okay. So, uh, so um, from my re review of the document, uh, I think uh, the authors are very clear that there are, uh, it's called traditional VPN, but VPN without any hardcore resource partitioning or delay, latency, those things. And uh, this is a VPN based on uh, NRP. So not all VPNs may use NRP. Uh, so I think, uh, I, I mean, I would disagree a bit with uh, Greg. Uh, this is not all VPNs will become this way. So either enhance or nrp base uh, that's we could look at that okay g yeah i, I kind of uh, agree with Kevin that uh, not all the vpns are enhanced because we already have vpn service for many of years and uh, whether we call it enhanced vpn or nrp based vpn to me i would prefer to keep it as enhanced vpn uh, we will uh, do another poll. How do we answer this? Oh, yes, on the poll. You should explain the poll. Oh, uh, if you. Okay. So, if you want to keep the enhanced VPN term, in, term or use the new NRP based VPN term instead of the other one. Right. So, yes. So just keep as it is. No, we don't change anything. No, we are divided. No, is that you want the new term? Okay. And if you don't have an opinion, don't don't participate. <clears throat> but yes, is current terminology enhanced VPN. So we have a nice race going. Let's see which one. But it seems to be settling out fairly even, but uh, NRP based slightly ahead. <laughs> Photo finish, right? <laughs> Mike? Um, Yes, so again, it's uh, Greg Mirsky. So my personal that I don't have a choice here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think the, the conclusion from this is we should take it to the list and discuss it a little bit more. Okay, I given can how long, that. Given how long the document's been going through and where we are in the process, I think there's a bias to keeping the same name, yes. Yes. but we still should discuss it. Uh, we actually had two people in the queue uh, Jay? Jay? You're not in the queue. Okay. Rakesh? <laughs> uh, Takesh Gandhi from Cisco Systems. I only have one comment that uh, often we come up with acronyms, um, uh, VPN, and now we have enhanced VPN. So somebody may start saying eVPN, and mm -hmm. that could create an issue. Thank you. Uh, it's a very uh, valid point. Because we do have a EVPN e e out there. <laughs> okay.
Okay. I think we dwelled on this enough. We'll take the discussion to the list. Uh, with respect to the remaining documents, uh, we do have a fair number of young documents that are at the business end of the working group process. Um, we, uh, the plan is to line those up for um, working group last call after the initial set that are currently going through working group last call, proceed to the next stage. These would be the RCP and the MPLST young documents and the three uh, topology model drafts that we have, SRT topology, L3T topology and SF aware topology. Uh, so please do review those in anticipation of uh, uh, last call, hopefully before Brisbane. Um, so those were the documents that we wanted to draw your attention to. Um, uh, if you have any questions on the status of these documents or any other working documents, uh, now would be a good time to pose those questions. If now is not a good time, please post them on the list. Okay, thank you. Uh, first presentation uh, through. Should I do next slide? Or click yeah, yeah, say, yeah, say next. next slide. Okay. Hi everyone, let's have a quick update on uh, VN Yang. Next slide, please. So, uh, we had the working group last call on draft version 19. Thanks for everyone who provided their comments and suggestions. The main changes after that with Adrian comments on where we published the version 20. We added context related to ACTN in the introduction because the draft was called VN Yang. We know the main use case is ACTN, so we added a little bit more description about that at the start instead of in the middle of the document. Uh, one comment was that we should uh, clarify a little bit more that how we are relying on the T topology connectivity matrix. So we added that part as well. There were updates to figures and JSON examples. Uh, further, uh, in the version 21, we had some more comments. Some of them I will go over. Uh, in my further slides as well, but thanks everyone for providing suggestions. The main updates were there was misalignment in some of the example, JSON example and the text that described the same example. So we fixed that. Next slide, please. So first concern, uh, this was uh, from Bo, where the suggestion was made that our model doesn't have something called as a VN type. Uh, the reason we did not have a VN type was that our model remains almost the same, whether we are type one and type two. For type two, the difference is in the T topology connective, connectivity matrix that they have an underlay container and inside that underlay container, you can specify an underlay path. So the change is mainly in an another model. Uh, our model remains almost the same uh, irrespective of VN type one or two. So it's sort of implicit. Uh, the discussion happened on the mailing list. Uh, I suggested to leave it, but we wanted to get this one opportunity if people have strong feelings that yes, there is a use case to clearly specify that uh, a BN is of one particular type and it should not be inherent based on another model uh, and, the, and the presence of a container in another model rather than in the VN model itself. If someone has any concerns, maybe we can discuss this right away before I move ahead because this is the only site I have for VN type. Uh, any suggestions? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Ethan speaking. I look at, uh, I think the, the, what is missing in the VN type two is uh, how you create uh, the underlay topology. Maybe we can look at, we can add this example and I, I have a mixed feeling. Maybe from that example, we will see whether we need or not the type. Because from the connectivity request intent, uh, you don't need a type. Because as you, you are totally right. When I request the connectivity, I add the specifier, do not specify underlay path constraints. But maybe from before coming to that stage, uh, maybe there is a need for a type. But I'm not 100% sure. Maybe let's go to the exercise to see in the, in the framework, we have the two cases where the, 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 the topology is pre configured a priori or when it is required by the customer. We can look at this use case and see whether there is a need for a type to make the flow working. 
Uh, you have the feeling that maybe yes, but I'm not 100% sure. Maybe let's do the exercise and come to a, a more informed conclusion. That's my suggestion. Uh, just to confirm, there is an example uh, in the document. The document does talk about VN type 2, but actually you are right. This comment also came from Tom Patch because the JSON gets a little complicated. Yes. And the, what's happening is that the VN model JSON is pretty simple. And the T model JSON is the one which gets complicated. And I was not 100% sure uh, as in, this is not the place where we are defining T topology model. How much detail about T topology model setting should I go we into? Can I make found, it simpler. We I can make it to, simpler. We can yeah, make we, it simpler. I try to find a balance. Maybe there is still this thing I would love to maybe work let, with you. Maybe let's just show the node and the identifier mm -hmm. should be enough. But to show how that this there is a set or a get operation on that topology to get the nodes and the links. Okay. Maybe we don't need to be, maybe a network with three, four nodes will yeah. be enough. But... No. Uh, it, Italo, I think that's already there. Just see, like, you know, what, at, what how I can make it better. Because okay. what you're asking is there. Maybe it's not meeting your expectation. Okay, let's double yeah. check. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let's move to the second concern. Uh, the second one is with respect to, again, JSON examples and the use of URI. Now, as we all know, T topology is an augmentation of uh, ITF network and ITF network topology. Uh, both of them use URI. Uh, type for various leaves like node, network, link, termination point. And uh, the, if you go to the INA, uh, where the uh, INA types, where the URI is defined, it's type string, but in the description, it clearly says that you need to follow uh, the RFC uh, based on which RFC 3986, which defines how a URI type should be. Uh, let's go to the next slide and see uh, what happens then. So. Uh, in earlier JSON examples, we were just using string. And we had seen even the earlier RFC from ITF network. There also they were using string, so I thought there was no problem. And in fact, MED had an errata, uh, uh, which MED uh, pointed out that no, a colon is must. We need to have some prefix colon and that string. That only will make it a valid URI format. Otherwise, we are not following the URI anyway. I went and looked at other places, ODL, other open sources, everybody is sort of using strings and IP addresses uh, because no compiler <laughs> checks this. And that's why this was happening. So good that at least we noticed this and we should fix uh, wherever we can. So the fix that we have done so far, next slide, is to add an example, uh, a prefix, uh, wherever we have an URI. And uh, this is the same uh, uh, feedback that is there in the 8407 bis as well, that use the URI example should prefix with example. Uh, uh, so that's happening. One thing which I'm also highlighting is this T topology ID. The T topology ID is actually not URI. It has its own string that is defined somewhere. And I wanted to get a feedback, like what is the best example that I should use for T topology ID. And basically my request was I'm getting, uh, I was focusing on VN model and I'm getting like stuck in the T, T topology JSON a little bit. So folks in the working group who have good examples, good JSON, which will satisfy our requirements for good examples in an RFC, please help. And I'm looking for help and that's why I'm here. Next slide. Okay. so. Uh, I think this is something what I just said, uh, need help. And one thing I was thinking, can we just move JSON example to appendix? What is the good uh, practice? Should it be a part of the core text? Should it be an appendix? So that's again something that I was thinking about. For JSON verification, I have used Yanglint. There was a suggestion that I should use Yangsen. So if somebody can help with that, that would be really nice. I don't want to install more tools. <laughs> uh, next slide. That's it. So help uh, first is with T topology ID, uh, suggestions with the JSON examples. And there were uh, one email that I have yet to respond to, which is the minor editorial change from Tom Patch, which I will handle and hopefully we'll move ahead. So please help. Rob. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, generally examples in the appendix is a good place to put them. It will help 
not to become the document like a super, <laughs> a super elephant. So uh, anybody has Yangson installed who can help me? I've looked around even during hackathon to find someone. I was not able to this thing. Is there anyone who can help with that? Matt? Matt? Yay. So that's all too. T topology ID. I think that's the only thing uh, I'm not sure about. So if anybody has a working T topology JSON that they have already been working on in some of their projects, please pass that on to me. That will save a lot of effort. Okay, but what, what I hear also that is interesting is that there is a model out there produced by the working group, the team Topoli, that has some doubts in some, some field. That, so we might, it might be interesting to see in the working group if maybe not, or even not here in a separate place, we can have some solving these doubts in, and, and clarifying the, the field that, uh, well, implementations will have uh, i guess if we don't say anything here implementations will vary on what they what they have but yeah. here at least there are some some places where there are doubts yeah this is a fundamental model so we need to make sure that like you know we have clarity on this and if there is some good example that the working group agrees we can put it on wiki we can put it somewhere make it easy for people to access that would be really helpful okay. so we did have a uh tutorial draft that kind of expired a while back that was supposed to have sufficient examples of how the T topology model would need to be used. Uh, I mean, we could go revive that, but uh, yeah, I mean, we should have, we should yeah. be able to get you examples. Yeah, there's misalignment between that one as well. And even I think the examples would be not following the URI there if you look at it. So <laughs> we do need to fix uh, that one as well. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, th uh, thank you. Thanks for giving me time. And we'll look forward to version 22. And if there's anybody uh, willing to help uh, throughout, uh, your help would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Next would be Italo. Thank you. I'm Mitro Buse. I'm presenting on behalf of co-authors and contributors an update on the RSC 76 bis. Next slide. Okay, what we did, uh, we um, updated the draft from 02 to 07 to address uh, mainly the comments where we're coming from the first working group last call round on, on T-tunnel uh, and T-pad computation drafts. So we had uh, some, uh, uh, we, added, uh, we added the possibility in the grouping to uh, specify both uh, uh, node IDs uh, and or LTP TP IDs as a, from RSC 45 or the TE alternative identifiers like T node ID and T TP ID from RSC 95. Sorry, there is a typo. It was a, a working group last call comment uh, addressed uh, for the T tunnel model. We had some cleanup uh, on the path computation error reasons. There were some duplication or some uh, missing uh, uh, causes. That so now is more clean, and uh, we uh, noticed that there were a, a proposal to update the types also in the layer three topology. So we moved uh, that update uh, from the layer three topology into this draft, uh, and we addressed uh, one of the open issues that were pending about how to describe the bandwidth and the bar size when you configure bandwidth profiles for packets. We align with the convention used by the other ITF RSCs, and then we remove the scientific notation way to represent bandwidth. And then we complete the list of photos to comply with the RSC 7322. Next slide, please. Okay, so after that, uh, we got uh, uh, some uh, uh, comments on the list, uh, which uh, um, we need to discuss. So the first comment was from Tom Patch on September 27. He was asking to have some summary of the changes that we have done uh, for, uh, with respect to the base version 8776. And we noticed that uh, this is a common let me say, um, uh, approach in, in other drafts, uh, RFCs, they provide this appendix. But in our draft, we have put some diff because the, the, the changes that we did are minor. And we are not sure whether this appendix is needed. We look at the RFC 8407. I also look at the NetMod ID new. This, uh, I didn't find any guideline that requires this appendix to be present uh, in the draft. And uh, the, uh, discussing with the co-authors, the, pre the preference of the co is not to write this appendix unless we have a strong requirement uh, since the changes are quite minor. And you can see from the diff uh, that we have provided uh, what has been changed. Maybe we can go one by one. So is the preference based on that you just don't want to do yes, it? Yes, saving, <laughs> saving efforts, yes. Going faster. <laughs> the idea is to go faster, yes. 
speaking as a contributor, I, I generally like those. I think those are helpful uh, as a, a reader or someone who's coming into it. So okay. if it's not too much trouble okay. as an individual contributor, not as chair, I, <laughs> I, I would prefer to see it. Okay. Any other comment on this? Next. Okay, then we noticed uh, there were a lot, a couple of working group plus comments uh, that were addressed to the T tunnel model, which is in working group plus call, uh, but whose resolution can have an impact on our raft. Uh, one was about uh, an old discussion we had uh, uh, in the design, in the weekly course uh, about adding the path loss and delay variation metrics. Uh, these are metrics defined in uh, 70, 74, 74, 71, and 85, 17 for the OSPF and ISIS. Uh, and uh, what we did, uh, we didn't complete actually the resolution because we defined the path loss matrix in the ITF team and PLS, but we didn't define the path uh, delay variation. And also we had some discussion, but we didn't complete about the fact that uh, these metrics are not MPLSD specific. They are specific for any packet technology. So it will be better to move them into something more common. So maybe a possible solution for this in, is to move uh, the existing uh, packet loss metric from the ITFT MPLS to the packet types in this draft and to add the missing metric in our draft. And maybe there is also some description which is good in the in the T-tunnel model, but maybe it's more belongs to this draft because it's more generic issue. We put that in the tunnel model because this issue was discussed before we started this draft. So we, we didn't have a types, a, a BIS document to, to work on. Now we have it, maybe it's more clean if you put this clarification in, in, the, in the types. Again, comments on these are appreciated. Okay, okay. Next one. Uh, okay, we had a last, another comment uh, from Julian about the fact that uh, we don't have uh, a way to control uh, the configuration of a tunnel with full LSP routing. I had some offline discussion with Pavan. And the reason, uh, the underlay reason was that for packet uh, technologies, the full LSP routing is basically implicit. Uh, but when you lose uh, this tunnel for optical, uh, there, then it's not that implicit. It has something you need to enable or disable on, on a tunnel basis. Uh, so. We have not, uh, actually, we had discussed that uh, in, the, in the weekly course, but we have not written down uh, the resolution. So this is what uh, I, 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 I remember, but maybe my memory may be faulty. <laughs> so I say this is a possible resolution, but people can have a different opinion. What, what we could do, we can deprecate. There are two identities uh, in, exist in the RSC 776, uh, LSP protection type, a root extra, and LSP uh, protection reroute, which are referenced to the full LSP. But it's not a restoration. Uh, it's not a protection mechanism. This is a restoration. So we think these two identities are wrong, uh, and we can either deprecate or even obsolete uh, as these are. That should not be used. And uh, um, then we need a new type to say that the restoration schema is a uh, full LSP routing, such that you can use this in the, in the, in the, when, when, when you can control. And maybe since the, the behavior the, 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 in the packet and the SQL is quite difficult, is different, we can remove the default values such that in the packet world, uh, the, LSP, the full LSP routing is always assumed as a default and the packet the controller may reject any try any attempt to, review, to remove it in the, in the optical controller, you, you put the default none and uh, you allow the operator to configure this value on, on, on a tunnel by tunnel basis. But again, this is a possible resolution. There, there, there is no consensus among the authors because we didn't, we did, I forgot to write it down and maybe my memory may be faulty. <laughs> so it's good, to, but it's good to discuss uh, in, the, in the context of the working group. So we have a, a resolution agreed by the working group. Uh, and the resolution here, how much does it, does it impact the T-tunnel? Uh, just removing the two default values. So you won't, you wouldn't need to change the other document? Uh... It's not a major change on the T-tunnel. Yeah. Also, here is not a major change on our document, yes. Okay. Next. Oh, there is yes, Tarek. Tarek. Hey, hi. I, um, this is Tarek, and as an a co-author of the T-Tunnel uh, draft. Um, I understand the ask, uh, and it's reasonable. We can remove the default. Um, we'll discuss it further, but this is uh, it's an okay ask, uh, in my opinion. 
Thank you. Tarek, we cannot hear you very well. Mm -hmm. The noise was dropping. The, your voice is dropping a little bit. Can you try? Hello, can you hear me well? Hello, Etelo, everyone? So, so. Maybe you oh, can write so. in Zulip and somebody can. Uh, oh. It's better than last time. I mean, you are the next presenter, so we do need to sort the oh, mic okay. issue out. Uh, but uh, go ahead and, go ahead and uh, state your comments. I, I, just wanted to signal that uh, as a co-author of the TE tunnel draft, I'm okay with the proposal. Oh, okay. Thank you. Is that true? Oh, okay. Thank you. It's clear. Yeah. Thanks. Next one. Okay. Next steps. I think we think the document is ready for working group plus call, and uh, we have to consider when we go to working group plus call that uh, the, these three documents, T types, uh, T and pack computation, are quite strongly related to each other is a big dependency. So as we have seen in this slide, sometimes a comment on one draft may affect uh, the other two drafts. So it's better to keep the three all together to make sure that uh, uh, when we go to ISG, we have a consistent set of documents and models. That's all, thank you. Okay, so I, go, I guess we, there are all these minor issues that need to be solved now before going to last call. So you will admit? Or in the middle of last, in the middle of last call, we can. Okay, we so can we can go last call, call with this version and then add the rest. Okay, so, okay that so, makes sense to me. So then we can start now the IPR pro polling process and in, in the meanwhile, you have time to solve. I'm sorry, I, I think I misunderstood. Uh, you have update, more updates to do, correct? Yes, these ones. Well, that these ones are coming from the MPLS the so when the updates are done, we should do the last call. Okay, so we I do, do we a do last call okay. and then with, uh, with okay. known updates. Okay, but we I, do the update based on this. Yeah, and then we do the last call. Okay, right. we can and do then, quickly. And, and then the documents, we have to be careful to make sure that they progress as a set. Yeah, so exactly. So e it's easy to do that after we've uh, done a publication request, but we actually want to do it before. Yes. So we want we want to submit them all three at the same time. Makes sense. Okay, and then it might be then better to to wait to have the final ver the version with these updates to, to trigger all the process. Yeah, okay. Okay, I'll try to do it quickly. Thank you. Okay, perfect, thank you. Next. Next, start. Yeah. Okay. Hi, this can is Tarek. getting closer to the mic. Yeah, how is it now? Can I get a, an acknowledgement? You're okay? It's a bit faint. If you can uh, maybe speak a bit louder. Okay, sounds good. Uh, yeah, uh, I, maybe back on the uh, uh, first slide, please. It's okay. I just wanted. Okay, so today I'll give you an update on this data model for traffic engineering tunnels, LSPs, and interfaces. Uh, we did publish revision 34 uh, from last time we met, but it only included um, a a moving one author from the first page to, as a con contributor. Uh, that was the only change we made, and. Uh, mm, I'm presenting on behalf of the co-authors. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, very high level uh, history on this. So the, the update that I'm going to give today is really a replay of what I gave in ITF 117. Um, this data model contains uh, two modules, uh, one module uh, for the configuration and state of uh, generic traffic engineering uh, attributes. Um, and the second module is to cover um, uh, configuration and state that lives on the device, specifically and strictly on the device. Um, there were uh, several comments that the uh, working group provided. Um, I, I, I don't want to, um, you know, mention name and drop name, I, I, um, but thanks to everyone who gave comments and previously, um, the authors addressed all the comments in revision 33, um, and we did present updates in the last uh, IETF, as I mentioned, 
uh, as of now, the draft is going through a working group last call um, since October 16. We started getting some uh, comments, and again, thank you for uh, people who are, are reviewing the document and providing the feedback. Next slide, please. So the updates we made in Revision 33, just so that we refresh uh, uh, again, uh, we removed some defaults uh, to allow flexibility on certain leaves, so implementations can decide their own defaults. Uh, we added an active leaf um, under the path, a candidate path, to, that will, will indicate that the path is active or not, or is, after it's been instantiated. Uh, we added a leaf ref under the forwarding path uh, to, to link it to the reverse candidate path. Um, we add a preference in the secondary reverse path that was missing, uh, and we described how it's used. Um, next, we uh, had a restoration type uh, for the uh, for the uh, under the tunnel, uh, and um, we uh, we we added this uh, restoration none uh, to indicate that no specific restoration. Uh, type is desired. Uh, I understand there is a uh, ask, recent ask on the list that came about this uh, this uh, default, and uh, we will take it um, as an in, as a as a um, comment um, to be addressed in the working group last fall uh, revision that we will make. And uh, next, we added text to describe how bidirectional and associated bidirectional LSPs can be provisioned this, using this data model. There were uh, two new leaves that were added, um, a source node ID and destination node ID, in, in addition to the source and destination leaves that we had, but these are of type URI. Um, there was an ask uh, that these are helpful to link to the topology model, so we added those. Um, and we clarified how the model can manage LSPs, um, you know, the, from the controller or um, LSPs living on the ingress or even transit and egress uh, LSPs. Um, and there were some updates that were made in the RFC 8776 uh, update. So we did align to those updates to make sure that uh, we are in sync. And lastly, we added a reference that was moving into the document. Next slide, please. So the ask um, in terms of next steps, I mentioned that the document is in working group last call. We encourage more uh, folks to review the document and provide um, any feedback if they have a, or acknowledge that it's ready for publication. Um, it's a longer document, so we appreciate uh, people being patient with, uh, with the review in it. Thank you. Yeah, so strictly speaking, the last call ended last Friday. The intent was to get the comments in so we could discuss them here. Um, so we did get some comments that came in this week. The reality is uh, that uh, we'll take last call, we'll take any call right now, even the last call is technically expired because there's always an opportunity to do IETF last call. So it's better to get the, them in now, even though the uh, working group last call period ended last Friday. Um, with that said, uh, as soon as the authors say that the revision is done and give a summary on what changes were made, if there's not major changes, we're not gonna do a third last call, we will just proceed. So uh, authors, please let us know when you think all working group last calls are addressed and make sure to send a summary of changes to the list and then we'll move forward with the Shepherd write-up and uh, publication request. Um, Understood. That, again, again, as a reminder to the working group, if you have comments, even if you haven't made them, send them now because we don't want to hear about it at IETF last call. Thank you. Thank you. Understood. Thanks, Tarek. I believe it's Italo again. Sergio. Okay. 
Uh, I'm Sergio Belotti from Nokia. I'm going to uh, report the status of uh, PAD computation, uh, RPC. So uh, this is the summary of the changes from version 18. Uh, so the working group last call, first working group last call. Uh, so we, we address it, uh, all the comments uh, from the working group last call from uh, Chaudet, Drew and Tom Patch. Um, we clarify in that context uh, uh, that RPC is uh, really augmenting the RPC contained in the TIA tunnel. Uh, we resolved the working group uh, uh, last all comments uh, about the SVEC object function. Uh, and uh, we align uh, uh, the JSON example uh, that is uh, in, in our document with respect to the TIA tunnel uh, JSON example. Um, then we align, uh, uh, made some update in the young to align the document with the um, RSC 8776 update and the tunnel. And then we addressed the, the post um, uh, working group comments. Uh, in particular, we added a compute priority uh, leaf uh, to make an order in the in the packed computation request. And we add a, a, a security consideration. Uh, and then we made uh, some uh, uh, editorial cleanup uh, related to the authors uh, and so on. Next. So one of the modification was to add uh, uh, this computed priority leaf. Uh, we, uh, uh, the path computation can be different uh, uh, depending on uh, uh, the order of the request. Uh, we got a, a request from uh, um, Orange, from Esther, ask for the introduction of a, an index in the another list of requests. Um, so theoretically, we can avoid to, to, to have an index ordering, uh, but just using the ordering by user, but that implied that uh, uh, you have uh, ordered by the user all the time. So we follow uh, the suggestion that is already contained in PSAP. Uh, so to add uh, a priority uh, leaf and uh, to add uh, a feature uh, compute priority indicating that the server uh, supports path computation request priority. Next. Uh, Okay, we, uh, in this modification, so adding compute priority, we uh, uh, got a comment from one of the contributors uh, saying that uh, the usage of priority does not prevent uh, uh, against the denial of service since the attacker can uh, set, set all, the, all the requests at the same, I guess, priority and uh, uh, that could be needed for shaping policy mechanisms uh, in the, in the uh, considering the implementation. And we added the text to address this comment, uh, um, uh, and, uh, uh, but also adding the fact that uh, uh, the input shaping policy is not part of uh, the scope of this document. Next. Okay, next step, uh, okay, is a second uh, working group has started. Uh, we did not get uh, any further comments um, and there is just a few pending replays uh, at the IPR poll that is, uh, I hope, uh, completed in these days. Um, we think that uh, the, 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 the draft is ready to move forward. Uh, as uh, pointed out by Italo before, uh, so our suggestion would be try to have uh, an alignment in the moving forward between the, 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 the three of these documents uh, because these are related and one comment in one draft can impact also our drafts uh, and the same in the opposite uh, uh, for, for uh, tier types and, uh, and tier tunnel. Ciao Dave. Uh, okay. Uh, 
in yesterday's CCAM uh, working group, I raised some uh, discussion point on service path computation. And I also raised some requirement that I think it's variable to also consider in the OTM path computation. So I would like you to also, maybe we can have some alignment in the future. Okay. Okay. But uh, you require that to update the model with your, you plan to have a model or not? No. Or, okay. Okay. okay it Just quite to... depends on what we, uh, what we found uh, in the discussion. Uh, and currently we cannot judge whether we need to extend the current model or not. You mean extend the model and CCAM, not this one? Uh, it's hard to say right now. <laughs> so we are in the middle of the last call. So if you intend to suggest changes, uh, yeah, now would be a good time. Okay, okay, understood. So uh, I'd like to remind uh, some of the others, I think we are still missing a few IPR responses. So if uh, you can, uh, because we, we did start the last call in parallel with IPR poll because this was a second working group last call, but we are still missing a few. Uh, for those of you who haven't responded, please do. Thanks. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Reza Rukui. I'm uh, Sienna. Uh, on behalf of the co-author and contributor, uh, I'm going to uh, give the, uh, the status of the NBI Yang. Uh, in general, uh, the document is uh, pretty stable. But having said that, this uh, slide shows the summary of where we are. Uh, I saw from the top. Most of them are self-explanatory. Uh, there was a discussion about the uh, topology and how we are using topology defined somewhere else in our model. So from that aspect, we have some discussion with the OTN slicing authors, and we have uh, some agreement on that one. We defined a custom topology, which is a container. You can go to our model, specify more than one topology, and that topology can be defined anywhere. And from that aspect, we are the allowing to do the topology reference from our model. Also from the OTN slicing, there is another orthogonal discussion about using uh, that model and augment our model to, to their uh, uh, further use. The, thanks to Matt, lots of discussion and the comment uh, came from uh, him and uh, a few of them are described here. The one aspect was about the uh, AC uh, attachment circuit. There are uh, a few drafts uh, to describe that one and we have reference to that. The, I have a separate slide to go through that, but some aspect about the AC is something that we uh, enhance this document to describe that. And uh, uh, the second one is uh, some of the improvement definitions and Yang module and so forth. Uh, we had uh, uh, removed some of the reference to some uh, individual draft. And then last but not least, uh, some of the bandwidth uh, value we change the type. So very, again, uh, minor changes has been done. The number of outer reduced to five as per request of a chair. And some of the, the comment that we got from uh, through review from Matt, lots of them are small and uh, editorial, but a few of them that we are going to uh, going through that one today, you know, in the uh, next few slides uh, that will be discussed uh, as a outcome of the comment that we get so far. If you can go to the first, uh, the second slide, the, about topology, as I mentioned before, that we have a reference, a container reference to topology. So the topology used in this context means that we want to, the operator or whoever is the customer of this Yang model would like to have a 
uh, would like to create a network slice service, but in addition to that, they want to enforce some specific topology to be used in the context of that connectivity. So we can use this one and we allow, uh, there was, it used to be one, now we are adding a list which gives more flexibility and this is obviously optional. If it's not given, uh, uh, nothing uh, will change, but we have that flexibility to do that. And with that one, we can model existing model or in a future model. I put one of them here as a VN model, but the whole idea is uh, as we go forward, we're not enforcing any specific model to be used, but as a general rule, any model can be used here. We think that with that, we close up this issue, but I would like to hear if there is any other comment that is addressing here, since we are getting closer to working group last call, it might be beneficial uh, to have uh, a discussion if there is any. No comments? If we go to issue number two, I mentioned about the attachment circuit. As you see in the model, there are various places that we define AC for various reasons, and it uh, would be beneficial to align all these with the work that MED and uh, the, are doing with other co-authors in the context of the uh, uh, ops group uh, uh, to generalize the concept of the attachment circuit. So that is a work which is happening independently, orthogonal to this model. And from that aspect, we want to make sure that we are aligned with that. And the proposal was to, the, for us at least, uh, the uh, few places that we have to change the reference the, to informative uh, reference. It used to be norm uh, normative uh, reference. And from that aspect, again, we think that we address the, the, the issue here, the concern that, and again, uh, more than happy to hear if there is any additional need to be done in this context, uh, uh, or this one satisfies the request. If we go to the third uh, issue, uh, again, this one raised uh, by Med uh, about, uh, and I mentioned this one last time as well in uh, I, uh, IETF 117, the QoS model that we have is on the top right. Today, the model that we have is not per cost because the assumption was at the time, our model is technology agnostic, and from that aspect, it's just specifying an intent. If it is the intent to create some network slice services, so from that aspect, the, mm, there is no need to specify the incoming uh, and outgoing uh, QoS uh, uh, per cost. But Med mentioned that the picture on the right, uh, uh, lower uh, right, it might be desirable when we have per cost, define uh, the QoS per cost. Also, there is a bandwidth support in that model, the model taken from that uh, the, uh, L2 VPN RFC 9291. The question that we have, this is still on discussion. We don't think we resolve that yet, but one thing that we want to hear uh, from the audience here, is this acceptable to basically go towards the direction of uh, adding per cost support? If the answer is yes, how we can do it? Should we just take whatever is in uh, RFC 9291, just put it and bring it uh, to our model or do some modification? So. They're more than happy to hear. This is one of the area that, that is still not uh, resolved uh, because we want to go towards the uh, working group last call. Again, more than happy to hear if there is anything that you can add here or uh, you can add it on the mailing list. Uh, this is something that uh, uh, we are waiting to hear more about uh, which way to go. I'm not sure if uh, chairs have any specific opinion on that side as well. 
we do have people uh, yeah bo yes thanks rita and uh, from the discussion with the mad I, I think the per cost actually is also technology agnostic it's class of service it can be used string to to define that okay so so at the author co-author of this job we think we can accept that okay yeah, yeah fair enough we, we can see if there is some method to simplify the definition because on the right part it seems like a list so i i don't know like we we, we like to hear the feedback from working group whether there's some bad approach to model that mm -hmm. So in summary, you said that it's a good idea to have per cost, yes. but whether or not we take that uh, model exactly or some yes. revision of that, this yes. is a still a question mark. Yes. Thank you. Next, uh, uh, Christoph. Yes, Christoph Sarkovic, GDPR Networks. Yes, I second the comments uh, from Bo. For example, for when, when we try to apply this to 5G slicing, one 5G slice can have multiple 5QIs. 5QI is the, is the QS kind of QS in, in, the, in the mobile network. And uh, if we'd like to map this uh, to, to our uh, network slice service model, we need to have uh, per cost uh, capability of defining per cost uh, limits. Or bandwidth okay, limits. Yeah, yeah. great, thank you. Thank you. Luis? Yes, this is from Telefonica. My, my question here is, is, is this cost would uh, have implications not, not only in the SLO SLEs, but also in the match criteria that we could apply to the to the slices? So yeah, definitely. That would be the case. Yeah, okay. if I rephrase what you said, when it goes to realization, it has an effect, you know, how to realize that. Definitely, if you specify the northbound, it goes all the way to the model itself and realization. Definitely, this will have some effect on that. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. And, uh, that's it, I think. Thank you for all, all comments. So the summary is, yeah, it's a good idea to go with the green model. And the next logical question is, is this a good idea to take exactly the same and put it in our model or uh, revise it? This is something that as a uh, co-author, right, we sit with other uh, co-authors to go through that. We uh, make a proposal on that one and we post it on the mailing list. Okay. Uh, is Christoph back in? Uh, yeah, I need to reach him. <laughs> <laughs> so the, with that, uh, I think the next slide uh, says that if we resolve all these, we are ready for uh, working group last call. Uh, the, we, we just said we're asking for that, but after resolving these issues, and hopefully by next ITF, we should have uh, uh, be reached to that agreement that yes, we are ready for last call. Thanks. Uh, if you can uh, summarize the proposals on the list, uh, especially the last one, uh, it seems like I think you got you. I mean, the working group seems to be leaning towards another specific answer, but yeah, if you can summarize that, list, that would be great. And uh, yeah, it would be great if you could uh, close this before the next meeting. Yeah. Um, yeah, I understand it's been a, a long road and appreciate all the work that the authors and contributors have put into this. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I drew, please. Uh, I think the name is also one thing which we need to, which is a big thing. <laughs> it's ITF network slice everywhere. Yeah. And we have so to do RFC, RFC XXX. XX. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, bit is pending. Good, good point. <laughs> Yeah, we will, hopefully by the time that we have this one for the last call, that one is already RFC and we can just take that one and add it there. But it's a good point that we have to work on the name as well. Yeah, so, thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, hello everyone, this is Jedo. I'm going to give an update about the scalability consideration for NRP draft on behalf of the authors. Uh, firstly, a little bit of the recap of the concepts. Uh, we know that, I think most people know this very well. Uh, we have the concept in the general framework of ITM network slice, but maybe RFC uh, network slice, 
defining that draft. And uh, this kind of natural slice services can be realized by mapping the slice service connectivity constructs to the NRPs. And NRP consists of a set of dedicated or shared neural resource and is associated with a filter topology. And if we want to support a large number of natural slices, the scalability of an NRP is also an important factor to consider. So this document is talking about the scalability considerations in both the control plane and the data plane to, for the realization of the NRP and also propose some optimizations. Here, uh, we summarize some of the scalability considerations mentioned in the draft. Basically, in the control plane, especially the distributed control plane, several uh, aspects need to be considered uh, which are related to the scalability. Like the number of the control protocol instances need to be established, and the number of the control protocol sessions, uh, the number of the control messages ad advertised by each node and amount of the information need to be carried in each message. In the end, this is the number of the competitions. Uh, for example, the shortest path forwarding competition, which need to be executed by the network nodes. These are uh, kind of sensitive to the number of the uh, NRPs, uh, and we can, this need to be considered when we provide a solution to realize an NRP in different scales. Uh, regarding the data plane uh, scalability concerns, uh, this document firstly they describe and analyze, analyze the pros and cons of reusing, either reusing existing fields or IDs in the packet versus introducing a new ID of fields uh, for dedicated uh, NRP identification. And the scalability implication of the different encapsulation options are also analyzed in the draft. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, here are the updates in the 03 version. Uh, but the previous uh, uh, discussion on the scalability, uh, we'll get some output from the group and also post it on the mailing list. This time we added to the draft as a new section called uh, uh, scalability design principles. Uh, the text is still the same as the, the one po posted to the uh, many list, so it needs further review and feedback so that we can polish it and make it uh, in a good shape. Uh, this document also replaces the term uh, not to align with the uh, framework draft. And we also have some editorial changes in this version. Okay, next page. Okay, here we list the design principles uh, in the draft. I will not go through it one by one, but uh, basically we have some considerations about the relationship between the NRP and the topology and uh, how we can support more NRPs with a limited number of the topologies and the data plane, uh, what kind of uh, identifi identifiers need to be carried in the packet and uh, how they can be realized in different approaches. Uh, we also consider the configuration and the instantiation of the NRP uh, in the network nodes. Okay, next slide. Okay, uh, th these uh, bullets are more about the uh, past selection, taking the NRP specific uh, attributes and states into consideration. And this, uh, we can support either a centralized controller based on uh, path selection, or we can consider the distributed approach. Okay, next slide. Okay, uh, this page is more about uh, the operator's choice or about the solutions for different scales. Actually, we can allow uh, solutions with different scales to coexist and uh, as long as the people are aware of their limitations and their applicability in different network scenarios. Uh, so we can support each solution and uh, actually uh, as long as there's uh, limitations on the scalability or the scalability consideration are well documented in the corresponding drafts. Okay. Uh, another thing uh, uh, with this document is uh, how we can we coordinate with uh, work in the other working groups. Uh, we know that there are ongoing work in the other working group on the 
protocol extensions or the protocol applications for the network slice or NRP realization. Uh, some of these works are targeted at uh, specific network scenarios with limited scales, and they may not be applicable to the uh, larger number of network slice or NRP requirements. So uh, our suggestion is to this document, this kind of documents need to make it clear in their draft, the scalability considerations and the limitations. Another point is some of the protocols may be more sensitive than others to the scalability issues. So, so far, uh, we think that most of the concerns on the scalability of the control plane is uh, on the IGP protocol. So maybe for the other protocols, uh, they may be less sensitive. So I would suggest to make that, uh, also make that clear in the scalability considerations in the protocol drafts. Um, the last part is uh, some of these uh, solutions aims to provide a high, highly scalable solution for the wide deployment of network slices. For example, in the network scenarios where there can may be even more than thousand of uh, NRPs. So this uh, kind of uh, solutions require very careful design and uh, we hope we can provide some design principle help the solution in the other working groups, okay? So here are the suggestions and the next steps. We would like to suggest to have further discussion on this NRP scalability in the working group and so that we can try to reach some consensus on the design principles for the scalability. And another plan is that we may add an appendix with some examples to show different possible NRP realizations and their scaling properties. Uh, in the end, uh, we hope we can coordinate with the relevant working group on the solution drops and to provide better scalability. Okay. Any comments for? So I think this is the I think this is the first document that uses RFC XXX uh, network slices. You know, it says this is a this, we can refer to these as that. I'm not sure that's a great way to do it. And I'm uh, uh, reading the text; it it doesn't uh, always feel helpful. Uh, so I think this is a lim little cumbersome, and we have to, as a working group have to figure out how to if we're going to have a short term for what the document, uh, you know, the, the, the framework is network slices using IETF technologies. It's a mouthful, yeah. but RFC XXX network slices is a little awkward and not necessarily understandable. So I think, I, I think we are going to have to grapple with that a little bit as a working group. I think look at where you're using the term in the document it's, and, and see if you really need the XXX and rather than just saying network slices. Um, but uh, yeah. I, I think this is going to be a, something we're going to deal with across multiple documents. Right. You're just the first one. So uh, <laughs> make yeah, it a comment need on to this. make a, Thanks. some agreement and to, to update the documents to yeah, all but, together. But <laughs> if go, go read through the document and see whether, whether where you use RFC XXX, whether you really need it, whether yeah, it really yeah. adds anything. Yeah. Okay. Hi, this, this is Luis. I, I, I was wondering if this scalability issue opens the door to, to some work in the benchmarking working group or, or somehow to, to find a way of benchmarking the scalability of the different options, different solutions. Because somehow you are putting there a kind of framework for comparing scalability. So maybe it could be interesting also to, to have some ideas of how to benchmark this. Okay. Yeah, that may be a good suggestion. We can take a look at that whether we need to coordinate with uh, benchmarking on this topic. Uh, Rob Wilson, uh, just to Lou's point about referring to this, could you just put it in defining the terminology section that network slice in this document means this and then refer to network slices ever, ever throughout the document just as without the RFC XXX in there? Thanks, Rob. Uh, Adrian Farrell. Um, 
it's good to hear an AD say that because we're only doing this because the the our, our beloved ADs, uh, I use that adjective um, inadvisably, um, uh, have told us to, to try to do this. Um, Lou, to you, please don't ask a non-native speaker to look through the text and see whether it feels good or not. Um, <laughs> if I said feel good by my apology, I, I meant to say, and I thought I said, whether it adds value, whether uh -huh. it adds anything. So if it means something specific, great. If it's just a, a, um, a search and replace of an old term, and we're really talking about network slices, or slicing, just use that. We don't, and I'm also happy to go through the document if, if you would like to do that. And I think that, I think that would help just like here, yeah, a two minute conversation with the document Yeah, it's like four places. And I think if you just drop them all or it's probably good, but you know, we can do that offline. Okay, good. Any other questions? So I did send an email out earlier in the day about, um, uh, what the chairs are thinking about with regards to work that's being done in other working groups related to NRPs. The only ask that we have at this point is for uh, these documents to have a scalable deconstruction section that talks about uh, you know, the impact of that particular extension or feature uh, on scalability in the network. And uh, to keep T's working group updated about the progress of those documents. We would have to look at this on a case by case basis. Um, so we do have another document that she would be pre presenting today. It was, it's an idea document and uh, the, the chairs, the idea chairs have asked for feedback on whether this is uh, a valid protocol extension or not. And uh, I'm hoping that we would get some discussion on that particular use case today. Okay. Hello, my name is uh, Krzysztof Szarkowicz from Juniper Networks. Uh, I would like to present an uh, update uh, about uh, RFC XXX network slices <laughs> <laughs> realization. So that was changed, yes, terminology was changed here uh, on behalf of my co authors. Next slide, please. So basically, a summary of issues uh, that we, that we you know, uh, encounter. So one of the major issues was to assess. Uh, if the material, there is an over, an over draft, uh, which is follow, uh, we discuss after this draft, uh, we call it uh, application drafts so or 5G application draft, size application draft. And uh, the question is about the content of these two drafts, if there's some overlap, not, over, not overlap, how we should, uh, you know, uh, separate the contents uh, between these two drafts, especially for the network slice mapping section. And uh, well, we uh, have discussion with the authors of the of the application draft uh, that will be presented after me. And the outcome is to keep the text of this network slice mapping section in the realization draft, so in the in the our draft here, and add, add a new uh, scope text uh, to both the drafts. So to exactly define what is the scope of the application draft and what is the scope of the uh, realization draft, so that there's no confusion regarding you know what should be. In both in both trusts, and then uh, we proposed fixed in the chart on the on the mailing list uh, in October, uh, and then we removed the notes that uh, something needs to be to, to be fixed. Next slide, please. Yeah, and this is basically the the proposed text to avoid the overlaps uh, between two drafts. Uh, so this is the scope of the of the slide of the application draft, the, the next draft actually that will be discussed of this. So basically, uh, the, the application draft focuses on the mapping between 5G slices underlying transport networks. Specifically, it describes uh, how RFC XXX network slice services can be derived in the context of 3GPP slice service. So basically, in other words, uh, let's say this way that application draft takes the 3GPP request as the input. 
massage this 3GP pay request and then provide from this 3GP request generates the network slice service request. So this is the, at the high level, you could say the, 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 the task of the application draft. So how the 3GP parameters, uh, you know, when I, when, when, I, when I send by the 3GP orchestrator, how they, they, they map uh, to, the, to the IETF uh, uh, network slice uh, service model that was uh, discussed uh, before uh, by Reza, yes, uh, two slides before. And then uh, for the application draft, let's, sorry, sorry, for the application draft, the realization, so how these uh, requests are realized in the network, if we need some QS policies, we don't need QS policies, do we need some traffic engineering, so we don't need traffic engineering, do we need some uh, NRP, so we don't need, we don't need NRPs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All this realization is out of scope for the application draft. Okay, this is the, in the scope of the realization draft. Next slide, please. Okay, and this is the, yeah, this is the scope, actually the title is wrong because this title here is for the realization draft, sorry for the, for the typo here. So this is the scope of the, of the, realiza the realization draft. So basically, technical realization of RFC XXX network slice, we can again discuss the terminology that should be used here. Initially, it was ITF network slices here. So how to realize that in, a, in a IP MPLS networks, basically. So how to use QS, how to use traffic engineering, how to use VPNs, uh, mapping between the VLANs to VPNs, et cetera, et cetera. This is the scope of the realization draft. Next slide, please. And then summary of issues and resolution uh, two. So there was as well questions regarding uh, if we need to maintain, uh, there was one section or there is one section called first 5G slice versus subsequent slices in our draft. Uh, we updated this text to clarify why we need that. So basically, when the first 5G slice is being uh, created, being realized, there is much more uh, things that needs to be done because the 5G slice contains of the user plane, control plane, control plane usually is the shared with other slices and so on. So the first creation of the first slice, realization of the first slice is much more task uh, intensive. So we, we extend, enhance the test, uh, text here uh, and we keep this section in our draft. The next one is clarify the use of inter AS option BC to model the AC between the C and P. Again, we are referencing here the, the, the AC model uh, that uh, we were mentioned by met before. And uh, we as well introduced the terminology of service aware CE because many times on the, the, the VPN service from the, from the you know, operator perspective, it can be already created on the C. That's the reason we introduced service C. There's a nice explanation of distributed P, distributed C in the draft here. Uh, and then the last one, further discuss whatever the TN slice in the customer site is covered out of scope of the network slice. So, okay, we agreed to uh, remove this text here. So we delayed the statements uh, from the draft here and the proposed fix uh, was posted already uh, on the mailing list in October 23. Next slide, please. And then other changes. So we added a new section to cover the interest option C that was missing uh, uh, before. So we discussed on the option A and option B. So here we have the option C. This is basically on the handoff between the domain which is controlled by the IATS network slice controller and domain which is not controlled by the IATF network slice controller. Like for example, in the, in the 5G context, we are talking here about the cloud or DC and inside of DC we have network functions and there is some handoff between these two domains. And of course the cloud is not, not uh, the DC is not uh, controlled by the ITF network slice controller. And there are some small changes, you know, uh, to enhance the uh, readability of the text. Next slide, please. And the next step, next step so we think that the co uh, content, uh, content is uh, quite stable now. So we went through the 12 revisions, including the individual draft first, and then a working group adopted draft. Uh, we are at revision 02 at the moment. So the proposal from our side, from the outros, is um, to target the working group last call by March uh, 2024. Until March 2024, still a couple of months uh, going, we are collecting the eventual additional comments. Uh, as well, we request early directorate review uh, after ITF 118 uh, from various uh, uh, other uh, working groups and uh, seek as well external review on specific sections. So we received already some review 
from uh, Rüdiger Geip regarding, regarding QS, for example. So far, uh, the review are positives. So comments will come. Thank you very much. Thanks, Christoph. Uh, I mean, uh, thanks for uh, working with the authors of the other work, other draft, and uh, making sure that the scopes are uh, clarified in both the documents. That was useful. Thank you. Great. Okay. Thank you. Oh, hello everyone, this is Luis from Telefonica. I will cover the, the other document that uh, Christopher was uh, commenting about, which is the, the one uh, entitled application. So essentially we take the, the request from the CGPP and, and try to take the, those parameters and, and map them to the uh, to the MBA model that was presented by Resa before. So next please. So uh, as a little bit of background, this document is the result of the merging of three previous documents. So uh, we have been presented several times, and, and also just to highlight as well the, the fact that we had a meeting with the, uh, the authors of the realization draft, identifying points to, to be covered. These are not in the in the slide, so let me comment briefly. So one of the, the comments to or one of the points to be covered is essentially some doing some alignment about the, the orchestration part. We have some different terminology and, and some uh, let's say details that need to be uh, aligned in order to provide clarity and, and so how. Um, have a continuity and consistency between the application and the realization draft. Another topic is, uh, well, in, in the application draft, we comment about some potential ways of um, doing the handoff of the flows uh, toward, I mean, entering the slice. So, because this is somehow uh, could be a, a blur boundary with the realization staff, the idea is to, to put a clarification, uh, add an clarification paragraph in the application. So, such a way saying that we provide some survey on different options because later on we do an exercise of mapping to the MBI jam model so so how we need we want to introduce the topic but not entering into realization details it's just simply clarification of the some artifacts that we use later on on the exercise of mapping to the MBI jam model then um, also we, we with this alignment we realize that uh, we will somehow have a, a, a very clear and a better understanding of potential gaps that could be either in, in ITF side or 3PP side. So we identify things, for instance, at the time of um, identifying what could be the kind of connectivity. Uh, you remember in the MBI model, we identify as uh, any to any, uh, point to multi point to point, point to multi point. So this uh, is currently not provided as, 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 as an input from 3PP. So we need to figure out what, from where we, we will take uh, this decision, right? So so these kind of gaps have, will be documented and with this alignment uh, and this, let's say, top-down approach, we, we are sure that we will identify gaps that could provide consistency. Another point is, um, uh, with this, uh, maybe you are familiar with the application draft, we are including some some examples of how to do the mapping from the CPP side with the different alternatives. So we also agree to include some example in the realization draft. So in such a way that we can provide continuity as well from the request up to the realization with um, in, in IP and PLS networks. And uh, finally, as well, some other qualifications about a number of identifiers that are being used in, in the realization draft. So these are more or less the, the points taken by the two teams, and, and we will work on, on keeping this consistency uh, in both documents. So regarding the changes, the, we also added the clarification test that was commented by Christophe. So it's the same the same test. I will not go into into that. Just simply saying that we are somehow setting the things in, in both drafts so uh, a re an external reader can understand uh, what is the uh, which is covered in each of the drafts. Next, please. Apart from that, some some few uh, changes, editorial changes. So we provide a simplification on the end-to-end -end network slice mapping procedure. We were, um, in the previous version, there was a, a kind of workflow explaining the procedure a little bit complex and, and also a little bit entering into realization matters, so we removed that. Um, apart from that, we also added in, in one of the figures that try to represent the relationship between 3GPP object classes and, and ITF uh, staff. Uh, we added the APARP object for, for clarification, for supporting, let's say, the, the discussion later on how we use the parameters from CGPP, and also the alignment in terminology that also we have commented before. 
as a next steps, um, we are we have in mind to elaborate more, uh, add more examples of this mapping between potential uh, ways of interpreting the 3GPP uh, objects and also different situations that we could have in the network. So currently, we are covering three three examples: the C mode, P mode, and also the P mode with the uh, attachment circuit case. But there could be other potential cases that uh, could be worthy to to include. So maybe this is a kind of open question to to the group: if this is worthy to to enter in these descriptions, or maybe we can stay as we are. So we were thinking, for instance, the dual home 5G, the case of the dual home 5G entity. So for instance, the UPF or or the GNU-B or the CU that could be dual home. So trying to understand the implications of that fact, or also the case where the 5G entity is instantiated in the internals of a cloud environment, where the there could be, let's say, uh, the, the the endpoint that could be declared by 3GPP could be in the internal of the cloud. So somehow we need to extend the connectivity up to the internal of the cloud. So this is an open question that uh, I, we would like to, to, to know what the working group feels about that. Also, we want to, to ensure the full alignment with the latest version of the uh, MBI and model. So be sure that we are in the ex mapping exercise that we are doing, that we are using the, the latest version so that this is consistent. And we would like to encourage the working group to review the mapping examples. This is important because, uh, well, I mean, uh, having externalized on that will help us to, to be sure that the mapping is correct and that we are not missing anything or we are not introducing errors or, or taking wrong assumptions. So it would be great if, if people in the working group could go through them. Um, also, that the, after the liaison that was uh, commented before by Pavan, we could expect some comments maybe. So we, yeah, we would be let's say, expect, uh, expecting those comments, or let's see, uh, as soon as they could come, uh, we will try to address. And in line with the realization draft, we will we will work, we want to work for for um, pursuing the working group last call uh, for next ITF, so we'll, we'll try to be ready for that uh, point on time. And that's all from my side. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much also for the effort on, on aligning with the other draft. I have a question on the 3GPP. Uh, I guess, did you already receive some comments or they are going to come? We expect that they are coming to, they are going to come. We are uh, somehow also interacting with 3GPP, uh, so providing some uh, change requests to, to 3GPP via the work that we are doing in Orange, so we expect that something could come from them. And uh, do we have a dependency on the document from 3GPP? I, I guess if because you plan to go to last call, but I don't know how stable yeah. are their documents compared to, to ours. So if yeah. we have any dependency, that forces us to to wait. Uh, I, I think, uh, well, depends on, on, on what uh, release of a 3 pp we could scope. So if we uh, are tied to release 16 or 17, which is all the specs are already out there, there will not be dependency. So it will be for for parameters that they could include for novel, new releases, 18 or 19, there will be that that, uh, that dependency, but I mean, if we stay with uh, 16, 17, would not be because our, the, the specs are frozen, basically. So. Thank you. I think we have Christoph. Uh, Christoph Sarkovic, Juniper Networks. Uh, I wanted to comment here on FreeGPP a little bit as well. From release 18.5, FreeGPP includes the reference to the attachment circuit. Uh, draft, so it's uh, officially referenced in the release 18.5, although it's still individual drafts from ITF perspective, yes, but uh, they, they uh, 3GPP acknowledge that this is uh, important, so they they reference this draft as uh, in, the, in, their, in their scheme, and of course we can work with 3GPP uh, maybe as well to reference the NBA draft or whatever. And ORAN as well, ORAN Alliance as well is referencing these drafts. Great. Uh, Greg Mirsky Erickson. Um, I just wonder, is it possible that uh, we have a little bit more formalized and organized way of communicating with the 3GPP and Orion using liaison? Because that, that would be somewhat more definitive, uh, not only in this subject, but just in general. 
So we did send out a formal liaison to 3GPP and various other standard bodies about network slicing related work. Um, so there is there is a, a liaison that has already been sent out regarding this. We haven't received any specific response back, but it, it's been sent out. Yeah, asking them, especially because, uh, again, my understanding in, for, with the 3GPP release 19 work where they will approach QoS uh, modeling. So it seems like we are ahead of them. So there might be a risk that what we define would not be used by them. <laughs> so, I mean, we'll continue uh, sending out in, uh, when, as and when we reach certain milestones, we will continue sending out uh, relevant liaisons. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, at this point, if they haven't, I mean, they haven't sent anything was yeah something that would explain them the situation that we want to be cooperating not to be disconnected christoph christoph sharkovich Nippon networks yes i wanted to comment on the liaisons uh, with my oran hat as well so we received the liaison from uh, itf at oran alliance and uh, we we'll probably as well issue liaison from uh, our alliance uh, site as well to ATF TS regarding the current status of the slicing in the our alliance. Thank you. Thanks, Krishna. Thank you. We have 14 minutes left in the this session, so we have one uh, one more presentation in the as per schedule. I was hoping we could sneak in one more, but yeah, I think this may be the last. Hello, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, this is better. Uh, my name is Bo Wu, and I'm here to present this uh, NAP Young model on behalf of all the authors. You can see that uh, there are uh, thanks everyone for uh, the contributors and the co-authors. Next slide, please. So I want to give a quick recap on this NLP Young models because uh, uh, actually this NLP Young model has uh, finished the first round of IPR process, but uh, it's kind of now we, we, we don't move on. So uh, in this presentation, I will give some uh, uh, updates on what we have changed since last IETF then uh, we, we want to um, get the feedback from chairs and working group, like give our some like, guidance on how to move this forward. And this NRP Young models is actually is for multiple NRP uh, management. Uh, NRP, like the previous uh, has been presented, it's, it's, already, it's a concept introduced in NS framework draft. And these YAM models covers not only the NLP network model, but also the NLP specific uh, uh, device specific models. And, and the model, uh, we try to uh, modeling all the me uh, mechanism that has defined in the working group draft that is NS APMPS and also NLP scal scalability. And in those two drafts, uh, the NRP like modeling uh, management, including installation, and also uh, the NRP scalability gives some like mechanism on the control plane and data plane. So these are two um, drafts uh, give some framework on how our, our model is about. And the other, uh, background is that this uh, NRP Young model is a merge of the two uh, uh, previous drafts, like one is NRP policy and this, uh, the other is NRP Young. And this model uh, like merge the, uh, take advantage of those two uh, drafts. So we think now it's uh, quite stable now. So the current status is that we complete IPR process uh, and we 
update uh, this model and send out the revision 02. So uh, I think this may uh, of course um, um, uh, maybe questions to the IPR process. But <laughs> <laughs> so the updates, actually we think the updates are not about adding the new solutions here. So uh, I will give the further uh, description on what the like updates is about. Uh, but uh, here we we want to thank uh, the uh, Joe Heffern and Tom Patch and Greg Nixby uh, on the uh, helpful comments to us. Uh, so next slide, please. Uh, here, I, I want to give the uh, the summary of the young, this young modules. Uh, on the right hand side, on the picture, you can see that this model try to uh, build a NRP model that other than the flat resource management that currently we used like uh, T topology or those uh, modeling, we actually use a flat resource manager. But this NRP, we try to uh, have that uh, hierarchical management on the IP network, uh, IP MPS network. In that way, like different network slices can have different service category than different uh, NRP can provide different SRO as E characteristic. So in that way, like each NRP can uh, provide the original uh, flat QS uh, traffic uh, mechanism like before, but NRP level, they have uh, another layer. So you can see on the left hand side, uh, that's the major components from NRP. Uh, the first is that uh, it's about topology. You can see that is quite uh, mapping to the uh, right-hand side figure that each NRP has a specific uh, topology and has different resource reservation. And these resources, uh, sometimes we can use a NRP selector to uh, identify those resources. And for those, each NRP selector, like uh, different per hop behavior can be applied. So next slide, please. So that's given this uh, context. Here is our first change based on the comments uh, from Joe uh, that uh, the comment is about uh, uh, whether this NAP selector is, has been like uh, being uh, adopt those mechanism haven't, uh, whether those mechanism has been adopted in other IETF working group. So here uh, in this update, uh, we right now change the right hand side. In that way, you can see that uh, we, we just changed the one part is about NPRS part uh, uh, on the IPv6 and the other part it's, uh, we're adding a, a two reference to see that some already uh, some ad adopted mech uh, mechanism has been in six men and also spring working group for MPIs here. Uh, we now uh, provide a placeholder for future updates when the some mechanism in MPIs working group has been uh, adopted. So. Next slide, please. And the second change is about an RP topology part. Uh, here, in uh, we not only have that topology can be uh, can support either filter or uh, selection uh, based on the topology. Here, we also have IGP congruent, congruent uh, that uh, 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 parameters has been defined. So. Before we don't add some examples here, and uh, but it seems very uh, not that clear enough. So in this change, we don't do any young model change. We only add some uh, figure and text clarification with this uh, 
on the IGP Congress. Uh, the idea is that uh, the NRP in some especially data playing mechanism, uh, the NRP can reuse the, uh, the IGP forwarding uh, on that topology. So that's uh, uh, some, uh, I mean, the function that we, we, we like this NRP provide. So that uh, mechanism is uh, uh, we can reuse multi topology routing and also black cycle. So, next slide, please. So, with this two changes, so uh, we like to have some guidance from chairs that, uh, like, how, can we? Uh, move on to the working group adoption, or there are some other concerns on this. Yeah. Uh, in this um, merged version, you yes. refer to PHP uh, uh, prop behavior profiles. Mm -hmm. Where are those defined? Where do you expect to be those defined? Uh, I, I think for PHP profile is similar like a QS pro, uh, policy profile. So yeah, they, we can add in some more text to that. that they were could previously be, defined yeah. in the best bar do document, which you drew from, but uh -huh. in the, in, in the, in this version, there's yes. no definition. Yeah. We, so we either, either you need to reference where it's defined mm -hmm. or bring that definition forward. Okay. Because right now it's just sort of hanging there and it doesn't have any backing. Okay. I see. So, so if the, com the feedback is that we need to fix that, then we can move on to the working group adoption. I, I think you want to not have any um, incomplete definitions, particularly when you had mm -hmm. the complete definition before. Okay. We can always fix it during working group processing, okay. but it would be better since it was in the previous document to just mm -hmm. bring it over unless there's a reason not to, and then you should flag the open issue. You know, if, okay. if for some reason there's disagreement, you know, sometimes happens, you have two, two documents that come together mm -hmm. and the authors can't agree, it's better actually to flag that and say, hey, we, we don't agree on this. And then the working group knows that. Okay. Uh, but right now it's just incomplete. Okay. I see. Yeah, okay. I, I think okay. if you had a reference to something mm -hmm. that is already defined, of course, yeah. that's best. But okay. if you don't have, um, if there isn't something defined yeah. and you had it previously, bring it forward. Okay. I, I think uh, the NAP, uh, Pavan, can you make a comment on that? Um, so I guess this was an oversight. Uh, so there's no disagreement. So it's just a matter of bringing it in. That's easy. Great. <laughs> okay. Uh, we are done for the first session. Um, so we are meeting here uh, in 30 minutes in the same room. I expect uh, all 62 of you that are currently logged in to come back. Uh, bring your friends too. Let them bring their tea and biscuits as well. Okay. See you soon. As a heads up to those online, I'll just double check that the link, uh, you have the right link. The last time I had a double session, they changed the link on us and it surprised a few people. So just re, re, you know, go back to the master, the, the original schedule, the agenda and open from there. Thank you. I was assuming that. I wrote two notes about the message that Yeah, I was reading that. Okay. Sorry, I was over this. Uh, I don't even know. I don't like to work with the